Good morning, folks. The video titled today isn't the metaphor most of us know, it's literal. There is almost certain to be geomagnetic storms in the coming days as two impacts are on their way. Let's get started at spaceweathernews.com and watch a calm last 24 hours on our star, but despite its slumber, we've got a coronal hole stream and a CME on the way. The coronal hole stream is due to hit tonight with the CME hot on its heels. Here is what we're looking for. In a normal coronal hole stream, the faster solar wind bunches up the slower solar wind plasma out ahead of it like snow on a shovel blade, and there is a density shock wave that hits first. And then, as it thins out, the speed of the solar wind rises. So what are you looking for on here, the solar wind data? I know there is variability here, but it is wholly within normal range. The yellow is density, the purple is plasma speed. When the coronal hole stream impacts, the yellow will have an increase, and when that descends, the speed and even plasma temperature below in green should rise in its wake, and both should be much more variable than the up and down you see here. The CME coming behind it presents the second punch. It would almost be better geomagnetically if it were to catch up to the coronal hole stream and just combine into a single hit. By tomorrow morning's show, we should know for sure. Now let's quickly hit the science news, shall we? Coral recovery is great news. It's baffling, but a happy surprise for the scientists who stop short like everyone else finding surprise adaptation and survival where extinction or close to it was predicted by now. They never question the toughness of the planet as it would undermine the political premise of their grant funding. Now, folks, how do you tell when a new science is accepted enough to be in the club and get appropriate theoretical treatment from people who get paid to think? This. This. Now that pre-earthquake electromagnetic signals are accepted science, the creativity and funding are going to skyrocket. Folks, we jump back to January to find one of the great papers of the year, and one of the last to make it into our 2020 textbook, by the way. This was the binning method problems causing wild ranges in the joule heating effects of the electromagnetic particles in the upper atmosphere alone. It was a big clue in the solar particle climate forcing game, and today, they are noticing those exact same sorts of binning method issues are allowing scientists to strike at the current paradigm describing Earth's core. Instead of a north-south cylindrical dominant flow in the center, there is an inner, inner core. This is the thing many in our community believe to contain plasma components, but here, they just go as far as to say that that inner, inner core is favored now, and dominant flow is with the rotation of Earth, not forming the cylinder. Folks, we know that evidence of the rapid onset of the Younger Dryas Ice Age requires new mechanisms of rapidly freezing the world. It turns out we might need to double our efforts because the Blake event that began the last glacial period appears to have gotten much colder much more quickly than they imagined too. Simple use of sediment told them what was able to grow, and it says the warmer plants were quite restrained. Now we'll come back to that need for a quick freeze in a moment, but first, a new flare has been detected at Proxima Centauri. Now the first thing veteran observers are going to wonder is its power compared to the event at the start of the decade, its first ever super flare outburst. Well, that super flare was 55 times larger than this one here. This one here is noteworthy because it was an optical flare and they noticed a type 4 radio burst. But veteran observers had that wonder because of accretion. It changes everything. More confirmation here of its need and triggering power for star formation. We've seen it create galaxies, pretty much, and activate them. Well, NASA and Keck has seen it, technically. When it happens to a star, they outburst. Sometimes it's a more constant flow change and luminosity variation. Other times, it causes a recurrent nova. New observers, Proxima isn't the only star to have a super outburst recently. Did you know there is evidence across all the planets of our solar system of something triggering nearby? Did you know that there is evidence of a recurrent solar micronova every 12 to 13,000 years, the last one being about 12 to 13,000 years ago, and that the other stars and planets activating and shifting, including our own, indicates an accretion-like scenario about to overtake the sun? By the way, that rapid freeze I asked you to remember? Flares heat, smaller nova, block out the sun, and dust out the upper atmosphere. I want to thank Dr. Dunning for his kind words which appear on the back cover of our new book. It's called The Next End of the World, The Rebirth of Catastrophism. Unlike our 300-page, 500-citation textbook on solar climate forcing, this one is meant to be read in a day. 
It is not utterly technical, and it spans the science from deep space and time to the sediment and magnetism and climatology to the myths and religions and other stories of our past. This book comes out in 2021, but you can pre-order it now at otf.cells.com. We actually will be shutting down the store here a few days before Christmas, so if you wanted a textbook, hat, shirt, or our children's books for the holiday, we will be closing end of next week. We greatly appreciate your support. Eyes on the solar wind. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe because we'll be back tomorrow to diagnose this space weather right here. But right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.